it's summer in Svalbard. The sun is shining. Shining nicely day and night. The weather is warm. Warm enough to melt the snow and ice. Water flows toward the ocean. But there is a new and unusual problem. Its way out is blocked by a ridge. The ridge was formed during the past winter. There was no flow in the river during the winter and there were a storm within the west sector. Arctic sea ice declining made the ocean surface ice free that allows the storms to create the waves and waves create the storm ridges. Water continues to flow and the water level rises. The catchment is flooded. The flood damages the habitat for the wetland birds and makes the active layer deeper. Finally, water overflow and penetrate the ridge. It breaks the ridge and the overflow stream changes the violent river. This example is the discharge of a small catchment with an area of 280 hectares only. How destructive may the flooding and outflow from a large catchment be? The discharge in flooding year is about 10 times that of the normal year during peak flow and the pattern is also different. This small little film is a small example of how the global change uh, processes at the global level are affecting uh, processes at all the way down to the species level. We have shown how the reduction in sea ice are affecting the, uh, the shore processes uh, by creating at winter time large storm ridges and these storm ridges they are blocking the river outlets and during the snowmelt season in the spring the meltwater will not be able to reach the ocean and hence the lower parts of the catchment area at least will get flooded and during this flooding process the water birds uh, and the early uh, spring flowers who has laid their nest and has started to flower rather early in the spring these nests and these flowers they will get flooded and uh, the eggs will get destroyed um, also the uh, complete uh, hydrological system will get changed by disturbed uh, discharge uh, pattern so the catchment area will be drained almost completely during only a few days and then the rest of the, of the summer season there will be very very little flow in the, in the river so uh, it will also affect the, the arctic char which uh, will not have the possibility to, to enter the, the catchment area due to the very very low flow uh, during the rest of the summer season. So we have illustrated uh, how the global uh, processes acts down to the species level. Another uh, problem that uh, might have an even more important uh, effect on the environment is that when we have flooding in the catchment area the effects from the warm water upon the, the permafrost uh, will make the active layer uh, thicker and that 
could create a, a situation where methane is uh, emitted to the atmosphere. And that, as you all know, is an, a very important uh, component in the discussion of the greenhouse gases today. What you saw was a theory. Now we want to prove the theory. That is, reduction of sea ice and storms are two causes of making storm ridges. Also, the reduction of sea ice increases the thickness of active layer. Our information and data to prove these theories are field data that was collected by Jonas Ackerman during past three decades. Sea ice data that is being provided by National Snow and Ice Data Center of the United States. Wind data from Norwegian Climatology Institute. Local air temperature data. And also global air temperature that is provided by National Data Center. Numeric analysis proved the reduction of Arctic sea ice area increases the storm ridge occurrence. When the sea ice area reduces to 9.7 million square kilometers or less, the ridge will be formed certainly. National Snow and Ice Data Center also provides the monthly shave files of Arctic sea ice extent. The distance of Arctic sea ice border from the catchment was measured through the shape files. At least 100 km free ocean distance is necessary for waves to be formed and be strong enough to create the ridges. We call it effective sea ice distance. After measuring the mean monthly sea ice distance from the catchment and regression analysis. It was concluded that there is a direct relation between the number of months with effective sea ice distance from December to March and the storm ridge occurrence. The more months with effective sea ice distance results in more storm ridge occurrence. It means that ridges are formed within a few months. The data shows there is an increase of effective sea ice distance during the past decades. It means storm ridge occurrence will be a normal phenomenon within a few years. There is correlation between the number of days with wind speed more than 7 meters per second within the west sector during autumn and winter and storm ridge occurrence. The more days with high wind speed results in more storm ridge occurrence. Until now we proved that the less sea ice area and also the more days with wind speed more than 7 meters per second results in more storm ridge occurrence. Another factor that was studied in this research was active layer. The active layer is a top layer of permafrost that thaws during the summer then freezes during winter. Permafrost contains methane that is one of the greenhouse gases that causes global warming. The warmer the weather, the thicker the active layer. The Arctic sea ice changes influences on active layer thickness through a chain relation process as you will see. Now we want to prove it. We want to prove that there is a relation between Arctic sea ice reduction and active layer thickness increases. There is an inverse correlation between Arctic sea ice area and global air temperature. The less Arctic sea ice result in higher air temperature. It is obvious that a Spitsbergen 
is a part of the global system. The higher global air temperature, the more local degradate tau. The analysis in local scale proved that the less sea ice around the Svalbard results in more local air temperature. Degradate tau is the accumulated daily mean air temperature above zero that results into thawing the active layer. Analysis also showed there is a direct relation between degradate tau and the air temperature. The higher the air temperature, the more the degradate tau. And also, the more the degradate tau, the thicker the active layer. The final result is the reduction of sea ice increases the thickness of active layer.